Hello, hello, hello. Good day again, once again, once again, everyone. We have another video tutorial for today. This time we are going to add up another problem in the shear and moment diagram that we have solved previously. So we are going to draw the shear and moment diagram or the shear diagram for this particular problem. We are going to draw the shear diagram and then we are going to determine the maximum shear. So I will be giving you another sample problem, another type of beam. Uh, then we are going to apply the same concept. So we are given here another sample beam. The beam is a simply supported beam with points A, B, C, D given in this particular problem. However, this is a kind of beam where the loads are concentrated 40 kilonewton and the other one is a uniformly distributed load, which is 10 kilonewton per meter. So the 40 kilonewton, meter, kilonewton load, concentrated load, is applied 5 meters from point A, while the 10 kilonewton per meter is applied at a distance from point C to point D, or the span from point C to point D, which is 10 meters. So what we are going to do now is to draw the shear diagram, and then we are going to determine the maximum shear. So again, the first thing that we have to do is to determine the reactions at the supports. So again, this is a beam which is simply supported and the supports are hinge and roller. So what we are going to do is to determine the reaction at A and the reaction at D. So take note our concept that if you take summation moment at either points, point A, and point D is equals to zero, or you take summation moment at D is equals to zero, we are going to use our sign convention that all going clockwise will be positive. All the forces which are going in the clockwise direction will have a positive sign convention. So we are going to draw, I mean, uh, determine first the reactions at point A and point B so that we will be able to draw the shear diagram. So let's begin with taking summation moment at point A is equals to zero. And again, all forces clockwise should be positive. So we have reaction at A. If you are going to take moment at point A, reaction at A will have no moment, but the reaction at B will have its moment. So you take summation of a moment at point A, we will have reaction at D is going in the counterclockwise direction. The perpendicular distance is from point A to point D is five plus five, uh, 10 plus 5 plus 5, so that is a total of 20 meters. And then equals you have 40 kilonewton which is going in the opposite direction so that's 40 the distance from point a is five meters plus we have the uniform distributed load of 10 kilonewton per meter so take note this 10 kilonewton per meter can be uh, converted into an equivalent concentrated load and that equivalent concentrated load is located at half of the span where the 10 kilonewton per meter was applied. So the equivalent concentrated load here is located at 5 meters from point B. Okay, So that means from point A, that is 5 plus 5 plus 5. So how do we determine the equivalent concentrated load? The equivalent concentrated load is simply the area of the load diagram. So we have here 10 kilonewton per meter, which is the uniformly distributed load. You multiply it by the distance or the span, which is 10 meters. So you multiply it by 10 meters. That's the equivalent concentrated load. And then if you are going to take moment at point A, 
the distance of this equivalent concentrated load from point A is 5 plus 5 plus 5. So that is 15 meters. So therefore, we will be able to determine the reaction at D. So let us calculate the value for the reaction at D. That is 40 times 5 plus 10 times 10 times 15 divided by 20. So that's 85 kilo newton. So we have 85 kilo newton here. Okay. Now we will take summation moment at point D this time equals to zero taking clockwise positive. So at point D this time, we will have from point D, we will have reaction at A is going in the clockwise direction. The distance of reaction at A from point D is 20 meters. And then you have 40 kilonewton, which is going in the opposite direction. And the distance from point D is 5 meters plus 10 meters. So you multiply it by 10. Plus, we have the equivalent concentrated load again. That's 10 kilonewton per meter multiplied by 10 meters. So that is 10 times 10. And then the perpendicular distance from point D to the application of the equivalent concentrated load is 5 meters. So you will be able to determine, sorry, uh, let, let me correct this. This should be instead of 10 meters, we are going to add 5 meters here. So that's a total of 15. Okay. So for the 40 kilonewton, you have 5 plus 10. Okay. So that's the distance of the 40 kilonewton from reaction at D or point D. So therefore, we will be able to determine the reaction at A. So the reaction at A will be equals to, by calculation, 40 times 15 plus 10 times 10 times 5 divided by 20. So that is 55. So this is 55 kilo newton. So once we have the value for reaction at A, this is 55 kilo newton. Take note of the unit. And then of course we have the reaction at D, which is 85 kilonewton. We are going to draw now the shear diagram because according to the problem, we have to draw the shear diagram and then determine the maximum shear. So if we take reaction at A here is 55 kilonewton and then reaction at B is 85 kilonewton. So based on our computation and our calculation, we can now draw the shear diagram. So of course you have the shear diagram, which is going upward at point A. The reaction at A is 55 kilonewton. And then in between point A to point B, we don't have any load. Okay. So that would be that would be zero. And then you will add up, okay, 55. You will add up the load. But since the 40 kilonewton is downward, okay, we are going to draw. So the reaction at A is going up. So that is positive. And then we have the 40 kilonewton, which is going downward. That's 40. 
So, 55. This one, R sub A is 55. So, 55 minus 40. That is 15. So, this is 15 kilonewton. Then, remember in between 15 kilonewton or point B to point C, we don't have any we don't have any load. Okay? So that would mean that is our diagram for the shear. Then at point C, we have the load applied 10 kilonewton per meter. So that is minus 10 kilonewton per meter. But remember that is uniformly distributed over the span of from point C to point B. So we have this to multiply, we have to multiply this by 10. And you would notice if you are going to get that, we will have reaction at A is 55 minus 40 minus 10 times 10. That's equivalent to negative 85. So this is negative 85, meaning from at point D, we will have a negative shear diagram. So this is negative 85 kilonewton. So from here up to that point, that is the value of 0.85 kilonewton. And then take note, there is a reaction at D. And you would notice the value of the reaction at D is 85 kilonewton. 85 kilonewton. And this will give us the value zero. So from this point going up, we have a zero value. So this is how the shear diagram would look like. And if you are if you are going to continue and you would like to determine the moment, then take note of this again based on our concept that this is the point of zero shear. So again, this is the shear diagram. And if you would like to determine the maximum if you would like to determine the maximum shear according to our problem, the maximum, the maximum shear will be, okay, take note that we have two values of shear here, which could be maximum, one and the negative, and the other one will be positive. So there is no uh, indication here that we have to identify a positive and identify a positive or negative shear but the the question is determine the maximum shear so the maximum shear is negative 85 the unit remember is kilonewton and this will be our answer so that's how we solve for the shear diagram and determine the maximum shear. So that would be all for today. I shall see you for another video tutorial. Keep safe, everyone. Keep stay healthy. God bless you all. This is Dr. Ram at your service.